Interest rate parity. It's something I'll touch upon very lately in this class. Uh, it's just this whole idea that interest rates between countries where it's easy to trade should be roughly the same. Similar idea to purchasing power parity, but instead of looking at goods now, we're looking at returns, uh, real returns on uh, different financial assets, so treasury bills, bonds, of uh, equal credit worthiness. Um, it should be pretty much the same between different countries. Why? Well, because if the return is higher in one country than the other, and it's easy for the money to flow from one country to the next, uh, similar as to goods, people will just flow their money towards where their interest rate is higher. But here are the big thing that we have to make sure that we talk about when we talk about uh, interest rates that they move together is we're really talking about real interest rates. Okay, Because if you invest, uh, let's say, in another country and it gives you 10% interest, whereas here you'd only get 3% interest for an equivalent thing, but in that country there's like... 9% or 8% inflation, well, you're only getting like 2% at the end of the year because when you're going to transfer it back, that currency has lost value. Um, so it all depends. Uh, but there is some interest rate parity that will exist. It's just something good to, to keep in mind. Why is it useful? Well, in the next chapter, we'll also talk about uh, the small open economy model. And then essentially in that model is small open economy is a small country that doesn't have too much influence on world prices of things uh, similar to uh, the idea of perfect competition and uh, microeconomics that you don't have an influence on prices while well, here we don't have an influence on world prices or interest rates when we're a small open economy and if you have perfect capital mobility is when you have full access to world interest rates so in this case here, the world, real interest rate in Canada should equal the real interest rate prevailing in world financial markets, is what this model would say. It's not always going to be the case, but you could think and just keep in mind that the flows will uh, have a tendency for this to happen. So a theory of interest rate determination whereby the real, as I mentioned, interest rate on a comparable financial assets should be the same in all economies with full access to world financial markets. That's the whole idea of interest rate parity. Uh, there's a lot of these parities out there. Um, it's just good things to keep in mind. If you look at exchange rate futures and different things like that, you'll understand how uh, they decide to calculate all of these contracts. Um, there's different things, obviously, that limit interest rate parity from happening. Uh, doesn't always have to equal because uh, financial assets carry them a uh, possibility of default, so you might not treat them as equal. And um, we can't, we don't always see these financial assets as uh, substitutes to one another. So since we're not talking about perfect substitutes between the goods, it doesn't always have to be equal. But again, similar to purchasing power parity, just understand that as soon as interest rates change somewhere, it's going to have an influence on other interest rates out there as well, especially if you're talking about a predominant interest rate in there. So in this chapter, we introduced the open economy. We've complicated a lot of things that we've already seen, and we're adding a lot of elements. Uh, make sure you understand these elements while going into forward and uh, the next few chapters.